still my soul, the Lord is on thy side to guide the future as he has the past. I think we all realize that these are days when we feel the need of special help and strength from the Lord. This can only come from God. So we invite you to join us in the next few moments in a program that we call The Quiet Time. We'll be singing some of the songs of the faith that meet our need today, and we'll be reading from the Holy Bible, the changeless, eternal Word of God. This is Al Salter speaking, our hymn singer Joseph Barkley, and Lauren Whitney at the Pipe Organ. And so now, let's join together in this first song, which is a song of testimony. I hope you can sing right along with Joe as he sings, My Redeemer. Joe? I will sing of my Redeemer and his wondrous love to me. On the cruel cross he suffered from the curse to set me free. Sing, oh sing of my Redeemer. With his blood he purchased me On the cross he sealed my pardon Paid the debt and made me free I will tell the wondrous story How my Lord state to save in his boundless love and mercy he the ransom freely gave sing oh sing of my redeemer with his blood he purchased me on the cross he sealed my pardon, paid the debt and made me free. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Lauren. And I trust many joining with us today, whether you're young or old, that you have this song in your heart and you know that you have a shelter in these uh, tremendous days in which we're living. It's a real blessing to know that we have a Redeemer and that the Lord is our rock. We need something upon which to trust, something that we can depend, something that's real. I believe this is really what was in the heart and mind of Ira Sankey, who wrote so many songs that speak of the testimony of the Lord as a rock. Remember this song. I'm going to ask Lauren to play it for us on a pipe organ. The Lord's our rock. In him we hide a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever ill betide, a shelter in the time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night. No fears alarm, no foes affright. The raging storms may round us beat. We'll never leave our safe retreat. O rock divine, O refuge dear. Be thou our helper ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. O Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land. O Jesus is a rock, a shelter in the time of storm. Now, I don't know if you're going through a time of storm in your life, my friend, as you join with us here on the broadcast today. I think you don't have to be in the upper age bracket. You can be in your teens. You can be in the college age. No matter what age, I know you have trials and problems and storms. Let's listen now as Lauren plays for us, and let's rejoice in our hearts that we do have a shelter in the time of storm. Lauren?
Thank you, Lord. And friends, I hope that you receive as much blessing as I do from these songs and especially from the reading of the Holy Word of God, which was written as holy men of old wrote as they were moved of the Spirit of God. And we have the account here, which is an eternal account of the actions of our Savior while he was here on earth. I'd just like to share with you today a very interesting account in the ninth chapter of the Gospel of John, just as though it was today. Think about it. We read that Jesus was passing by, and he saw a man which was blind from his birth, and his disciples were with him, and they asked him, and they said, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? I imagine many have thought of similar questions as we join together today. Well, Jesus answered, he said, Neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, and he made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam. He went his way, therefore, and he washed, and came seen. Well, the neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? And some said, This is he, and others said, He is like him, but he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? And he answered, and he said, A man that is called Jesus made clay, and anointed mine eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam, and wash. And I went and washed and I received my sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. And they brought to the Pharisees him aforetime that was blind, and it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. And then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight, and he said unto them, He put clay in my eyes, and I washed, and I do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. And others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They said unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him, that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight, and they asked them, saying, Is this your son who ye say was born blind? How then does he now see? Well, his parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we do not know. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him, he shall speak for himself. These words, we read, spake his parents, because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. And therefore said his parents, He is of age, ask him. And then again they called the man that was blind, and they said unto him, Give God the praise, we know that this man is a sinner. And he answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or not, I know not. One thing I do know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he do to thee? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I have told you already, and you did not hear. Wherefore would you hear it again? Will you also be one of his disciples? Then they reviled him, and they said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. We know that God spake unto Moses, as for this fellow we know not from whence he is. And the man answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is, and yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. 
And they answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And then they cast him out. And Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. What a tremendous testimony. Shall we lift our hearts in a word of prayer? And then, Joe, if you will, I think we have time for this next song, No One Ever Cared For Me Like Jesus. I'm sure this is what this man who was born blind would say. Our Father in heaven, how we do thank thee for thy goodness and for thy mercy. We thank thee for thy love. We thank thee for thy Son who came into the world that we might have light and that we might have life, and that our eyes might be open. We praise Thee in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus Since I found in Him a friend so strong and true I would tell you how he changed my life completely He did something that no other friend could do No one ever cared for me so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he Well, thank you, Joe. Thank you, Lauren. And as we bring another broadcast to a close, I'm sure that as we consider what the Lord can do and what he has done, we can join with the scripture that we find in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, in closing, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us this word of reconciliation. Be still, my soul, thy best, thy heavenly friend, through thorny ways leads to a joy.